The first year player draft is the primary mechanism of Major League Baseball. It assigns amateur baseball players from high schools, colleges, and other amateur baseball clubs to its teams. The draft order is determined based on the previous season standings with the team possessing the worst record receiving the first pick. Unlike most sports drafts, the first year player draft is held during the middle of the season, and it is the largest in comparison to those of other major professional sports leagues. Why am I pursuing this? You throw this close to 100 miles an hour, good luck. That was just plain nasty. This young man from Missouri State is charged up. You see that fist pump? When I was in third grade, I can vividly remember you know, a story of I was sitting in math class. I actually walked over to the window and looked out the window because it was like an overcast rainy day. I knew I had a game that night. So he says to his teacher, uh, Miss Deej, can you send an email to my mom and make sure my game's still on? She told us about that and, and she was like, he's not learning much math today. And we just knew, you know, he just had such a passion for it. Obviously growing up, like it was only us two, so we did everything together pretty much. And we would play wiffle ball all the time. I was terrible and it would probably end in me like getting mad because he was throwing it too hard or whatever and I would like, go tell mom to make him throw it softer for me. There was this one time where he was pitching and I was up to bat and I fouled the ball off and it got stuck in one of our trees. He was very particular about like which wiffle ball he wanted to pitch to me because he wanted to be able to like throw the best curveball and drag me out. So he needed this wiffle ball. We go over to the tree and we're like trying to shake the branches to get it down a little bit, not coming down. He decides that to get the ball down, we're gonna throw a wooden bat into the tree. He chucks this wooden bat into the air, does not go anywhere near the tree and ends up busting out the back window of my mom's Durango. As soon as it happened, we were like, oh no. This is the worst case scenario. Like, what are we gonna tell mom? What are we gonna do? That one definitely threw him right under the bus on that. I was like, mm -mm, this is not on me, dude. Like, you're the one that decided to throw the bat. This one's on you. We didn't get to throw uh, bats into the trees after that one. Growing up, I was terrified of pitching. I was gonna hit a kid or I couldn't throw a strike. For me, I was not about it. I was more like I wanted to be, you know, catcher or shortstop. But once I started pitching, it was, I kind of fell in love with being in control of the game and having that adrenaline rush, I guess, pre-pitch, you know, pre-game, having you're, you're the pitcher. So that's kind of when I started pitching, when I was like almost 11 or 12. When they were little, we always used to, you know, tell them, you know, keep your, keep your circle small. Always remember who you are. I mean, that was like a normal phrase when, we, when they walked out of our house, remember who you are. That was definitely something that my dad had said to us when we would leave the house, remember who you are. And then just a funny thing Shannon used to say all the time uh, to them was, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And, and so we even tease about that now, you know, it, it's really true. Going into my f freshman, sophomore year of high school, uh, my success had kind of continued to rise a little bit on a higher level than just like a local level. I remember it was in Florida, now we were playing in Florida and I threw a complete game shutout and it was one of those, I kind of looked at my dad in the dugout and I was like, this isn't, like this could be something for real. As the years kind of progressed, you know, junior year, I had the college coaches started calling me, recruiting me. And then senior year after I was committed to Missouri State, I started getting, you know, draft interest. And I was like, I thought I was just gonna go to school. And then like the last four weeks of our season, slowly but surely I started seeing more, you know, major league scouts coming around and for me, it was like, whoa, what is this? My initial thoughts of the MLB draft process as a senior, I honestly didn't have, an, I didn't have any idea of what was going on. Some of my friends had been drafted before, but I didn't really understand the whole process. This second time around is a little bit different because to be quite honest with you, the draft's a month later than it usually has been, you know, the entire the draft, you know, usually it's in June. Well, this year it got pushed back to July. I haven't pitched or played in a game since the end of May. Like that was our last time coming off my junior year. Uh, how do I keep my body in shape? The way I would keep it on is if the, the draft was in June and not in July. So for me, you know, it was a lot of coming home and you know staying on the three or four days a week workout program, throwing two to three times a week, you know, getting my bullpens in and maintaining the same usage that I would have had during the season as we were continuing to play or had the draft been in June, you know, I'm already drafted, the draft's already gone. To be honest with you, it kind of takes a toll on you mentally. With raising our children, uh, we have always tried to 
give them a firm foundation. Go to the Lord. Um, and sorry, it, it, it really means a lot to me that our family has become so faith-centered. You know, that whole college recruiting phase, and, and then with our son and our daughter, and then now this whole draft phase of not knowing what to expect. You, you just kind of just got to sit back and let Jesus take the wheel. Everything that from the draft process is out of my control. Ultimately, I feel like this is my calling, and if, I, if I'm comfortable with it, then there should be no fear, because if it's his plans, then everything's gonna work out the way it should work out. Jeremiah 29, 11, it's a verse that I've gone to for a really long time in my life. And you know, as an athlete, you don't really know what's next, as far as, you know, this next game, when's your last game gonna be? But there's a life for me outside of baseball, regardless of whenever it starts and ends. You know, I have to continue to live life whenever baseball's over. And for me, just having that faith and trust and that God has the best plans for my life and that my plans are not the correct plans for life, regardless of how much I want them to be. God's plans are always better than your own plans. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. My body feels really good. Uh, arm felt good this morning, so, you know, 35 pitches and the next day you feel, feel good is always a good sign. Just continue on and a couple more to go and continue to have the success that I had and hopefully end up, you know, this July end up off the board somewhere. The overall workout today consists of a handful of prospects um, from different parts of the country. They've shown numerous scouts, you know, their ability, whether it's, uh, you know, position player-wise or whether it's on the mound. All of these guys, uh, you know, that, that come to these types of workouts, they're here for a reason. They all bring something to the table. These type of workouts, just relax, have fun, be yourself, stay in the moment. There's not a lot of kids around the country that get to do something like this. Keating from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I go to JUCO down at Southeast Community College in Beatrice. Booked a flight for 3.30 yesterday, got canceled at about one o'clock, and me and dad packed up the truck and drove down. Got, got in around 11.30 last night. It's been a good time. Uh, I actually met up with a high school buddy of mine. He was doing this too. Running's always fun, and uh, BP's good. Got to see some good talent here, and. You know, it's always fun to compete against each other. Brandon Sinkiel, I'm from Rapid City, South Dakota, and I'm committed to the University of Utah. I flew out from Rapid City, it's a, had a layover in Minnesota, so I mean, the emotions building up, you're obviously thinking, you know, it's exciting to get out here and be with some big dudes. The biggest unknown for me, honestly, is just what people are thinking, you know, I mean, as a, as a high school player coming up, you never really know what people are saying. I mean, your advisor will be telling you stuff, but you really, you really always have questions for yourself at the end of the day. My name is Carter Jensen. I'm from Kansas City, and I'm committed to LSU. It's been basically my dream to play professional baseball. So coming out here so young, um, I'm truly blessed to kind of have that opportunity and uh, to play in front of these guys. My advice to young ball players going through this: um, basically, just have fun and. Uh, um, really not uh, take anything for granted because uh, it can be gone just like that. Have fun with your teammates while you can, um, have fun at home while you can, and then uh, kind of do everything you can to prepare yourself to uh, go on to the next level and perform well.
Hello. Yeah, this is Hayden. Yeah, I can talk. We can get something set up for sure. Yeah, I can do a Zoom, anything, you know, any type of call you guys need to do, I can take care of. Yes, sir, thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. <laughs> Trying to do my, come in here and get, get warmed up, do a nice little bullpen for today, and you get a phone call, you gotta take it. You never know what's, when your phone's gonna ring, so. It's just kind of an example of what I've been going through, you know, the last couple of days and the last couple of weeks of, as the draft gets a little closer. You know, it's, it's one of those things, I've done enough of them now where it's kind of, it comes a little easy to me, whereas in the past it was like, uh, I don't know what to say. They want to know who I am as a person, so how can I give them the best representation of me over the phone? And it's, you know, be yourself, be calm, act as if you were talking to them face to face and having, you know, a conversation instead of on the phone. June 2nd. Uh had a workout actually at turn two, um, kind of a crazy one as far as you know, how it went down. It was supposed to go down at, or it was supposed to go like 10 o'clock at night. Just a very weird first amateur workout. Like that's not how you would expect your first amateur workout to go. And ultimately ended up getting delayed to like 1.30 in the morning. So I'm down, you know, throwing a bullpen at 1.30 in the morning. Great experience and honestly, it kind of paved my way for for the next couple I didn't do. Three short days later, June 5th, I actually had to go to Chicago for another one. Didn't really know what to expect going to a, an actual like invite. Hey, this one, you know, there's any other people there. Uh, we we're all chasing one dream, you know, get drafted. Um, actually ended up knowing, you know, a couple, quite quite a few kids at this, at this workout. I'm very thankful for, you know, having those at the very beginning of June and how I was setting everything up. Having those days, those days behind became my, hey, these are your heavy bullpen days. Like these are the days where you would throw in a game, so to speak, if you were still playing. You know, June June 15th comes along, another outdoor one. We're right here in St. Louis. There's a lot of talent in this area, and next thing you know, you got three or four kids you know there, whether you played against them or you grew up playing with them. And for that one, like, I'm very thankful having that, you know, being 15 minutes away, a week and a half later, June 28th, um, throwing in Arlington, Texas, in a brand new stadium. You know, I've been on big league stadiums before, but I've never pitched in a big league stadium. And having that as a, as like a first, kind of like, okay, this is a surreal moment right here. Hearing, you know, the glove pop and the ball, like just echo in the stadium, it was something that I'll never forget. Ended up, you know, having two, two workouts and they were both local to end up my, you know, amateur workout career in there. Both being with teams that I grew up watching and, and loving, just had a really good workout. Like just kind of like let the emotionals, get, like the emotion part of it go and just kind of like, performed my ability that I know how to do. Wrapping up with a, with a workout at Bush Stadium is something that I could never even imagine. Like going to that stadium as a kid all summer, you know, the summer's going up. It's like, hey, we're going to Bush Stadium, watch the Cardinals play today. And it was one of those things that I'll never forget. I've played there, I've got to play there in you know, high school, but this is a much different um, level as far as, you know, what, what, could, what could transpire from this. Very surreal being on a field that is literally in my backyard and just kind of having this awesome moment, you know, with my family there, it kind of meant a lot to me. Having the support from my family means honestly the world to me. Not many things I could do in life to repay, you know, my parents and my sister as far as what they've done and the sacrifices that they've made for me. There's no action I can I can take to thank them. There's a lot of people that I can count in my head that's like, you know, they cared for me. But the way, you know, I connected with Sam right away was is different a little bit. And I think him being a, a believer himself and having him being, being firm in his faith uh, really helped me. You know, not as a, not only as a player, but as a, as a human, and just you know, getting to pick his brain outside of baseball. Having my sister there, 
Um, if I needed to talk to someone that's not my parents, she was the person I talked to. My sister was always there for me. We'd go down, you know, we'd hop in the car, go get Dairy King or go just drive around back roads and we'd just talk. And regardless if it was me or her, like that's kind of what we would do together. For me, like that really helped me out a lot to clear my head. Just being able to talk to her and having having her, getting her whatever her thoughts were on it or what I should do or something, having her there was great. Getting some head start on my packing here. Just uh, didn't want to have to do everything all at one time. I've heard a lot of stories from people that I've known or just have watched videos, but there are a lot of stories where guys are supposed to go somewhere and then ultimately end up falling in the draft. You know, draft's a crazy process as far as you know when your name's actually going to get called, and uh, it's kind of making me a little anxious now. Hopefully, it's in God's plans that. I can play professional baseball because, you know, I want to be a, a light to kids and bring joy to people and kind of show everybody that, you know, why I'm playing. But we'll have to wait and see. This is exciting. Since 2009, the draft, it came from New Jersey, our MLB Network studios. That has changed. We've moved it for the first time ever. It's not in June, it's in July. And it is now on the road, Denver, Colorado, part of All-Star Week. Harold, this is a dream come true for us. I knew. That. Did you see the first video? Oh my gosh! The, your comment? No, I know. No, the first. Yes, I did. The first video. I did. Yeah. So we recorded that before you ever commented that, but we just remember that day, like that day in class. Like I vividly remember it. So does she. Thank you so much for this awesome opportunity to come together with all of our close friends and family. Um, thank you so much for just this incredible opportunity for Hayden to go beyond and play baseball for a higher purpose. God, I pray that your will be done today, that if it's your will, he'll be drafted by the perfect team and we'll just have so much peace about it. This is all just for your glory and that you have planned out every single step of the way. Pray that we enjoy this last last few days as a family, but we give you all the glory, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's get ready for round two, and we'll keep running all the way through round 10. Scott Braun, Jim Callis, Jonathan May, you guys look very well rested. Tell me, what did you take out of yesterday that we can bring into today? Well, I, there's still a lot of really good talent on the, on the board, as Jim and I have always discussed. You know, if you weren't taken in day one, if people were wondering what's gonna happen, will these guys go to school? Almost everybody who gets drafted today will sign and begin their pro career. So I'm Matthew Albritton. I've been playing baseball with Hayden since we are 12. We got to play in high school together. So to be here and watch this is awesome. We've been talking about it since we were little, playing wiffle ball in the backyard and mowing the grass, trying to make a perfect field and everything. So to be here now is just unbelievable. It's an awesome experience. Known Hayden his whole life. I've known his parents for probably 35, 40 years. Watch Hayden grow up. Uh, he's kind of been a big brother to my son. Uh, it's exciting to see him transform into a, a young man, a great athlete, even a greater person. We live in Alabama. We made the eight hour drive up to, to be here today. Uh, wouldn't miss it for the world and uh, cannot wait to see uh, what, what the future holds for him. I'm Ian McMahon. Uh, I've known Hayden for the last five years, coming on six. And just being here today, just being able to celebrate him, it's a really special moment for both of us. 
I know we've been talking since we were in high school. First, like, we first dreamed about just, like, playing in college together. And then eventually this last year, we finally got to play at Missouri State together, which was a dream for both of us. And then now on draft day, just kind of being here and seeing him be able to live out his dream. I'm super excited to see where he goes in this next path of Pro Bowl, wherever he ends up, where uh, there's going to be a million people out there supporting him to see what he's going to do. And let's, there's no telling what could happen over these next three, four years, and hopefully see him in the big league soon. Hi, my name is Jake Radosvich. I'm a catcher at Triad High School, and today I'm at Hayden Younger's draft watch party. And the last couple of weeks have been very exciting for him and exciting for me to catch him. I'm happy for him wherever he goes. I'm here for him. I'm going to be catching him for a long time. So it's a great day. A great day for Hayden. A great day for all of us. This is probably one of the worst days personally. You know, your insides are shaky. The unknown is just trying to figure out, you know, what's going to happen next. Teams calling you saying you're going to might be taken here. How much do you want? All this stuff. You don't know exactly, you know, and you're just trying to help out, get help from your agent, get help from other people. But this is one of the most unpredictable days of the year by far. We're around three now, and uh, you know, I'd say we're getting towards this part where it's starting to get hot for him a little bit. The Kansas City Royals select Carter Jensen a catcher from Park Hill Senior High School. The Colorado Rockies have the next selection. Welcome back to our 2021 MLB draft coverage. Round six starts now with the Pittsburgh Pirates. the next selection and here they go. Toronto Blue Jays select Hayden Yinger, a right-handed pitcher from Missouri State University. <laughs>
After going through this experience, I realized that it's not about the pursuit of you know playing baseball and me loving it or me loving to compete. It's about that God has allowed me to use a platform for something that's way bigger than me. And to bring light to that is ultimately what I want to do. And this is all said and done. It's not about the draft. It's not about me. It's about the bigger picture.